Hi everyone, welcome to the Cal Soap Santa Barbara Consortium Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you're here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are here, ready and available to answer your questions. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. There are more sessions coming up and feel free to sign up for more college presentations being offered um, in the next coming days. And lastly, all sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash CalSoap. So without further ado, I'll turn over to um, our next presenter and our facilitator that's gonna help um, for this session to Madeline. Thank you, Catherine. My name is Madeline. I am a Cal Soap College peer advisor. Um, I'm so happy you could all make it tonight. We have presentations on financial aid as well as community colleges, specifically Santa Barbara City College. Um, Laura, if you could please go to the next slide. Laura is another Cal Soap College peer advisor who is here tonight. Um, so we're both from Cal Soap and we are a program with a mission to increase college readiness and accessibility of higher education opportunities. Um, we help students increase accessibility by providing free tutoring, college and financial aid advising, and then workshops like this workshop tonight, which provides college awareness and preparation. So to contact us and get more information about our services, you can visit our website email us or um, contact us via telephone, take a picture, take a screenshot, whatever you need to do to get done our contact info. And we'll be showing this again at the end of the night, just in case you don't get it. Um, and then we'll be moving on to our presenters. So we have Jose here from the Scholarship Foundation of Santa Barbara, and he will be starting us off tonight with a presentation on financial aid. Later, we'll be hearing from Elizabeth, will be giving us information about community college. So you can take it away, Jose. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, can I have access to sharing the screen? Perfect. All right, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we will, I will be doing a quick presentation about financial aid. I know you guys are um, not seniors yet, but this is information that is always helpful. I always tell students, you know, um, it's, it's never too early to learn about financial aid, especially if you're, I know most of you are going to be going to college and one of the big questions is how to pay for college, right? So the scholarship foundation is here to provide information. And by the time you're seniors, we also provide, uh, not only, uh, this information again in more detail, but we also, we actually work with most schools here in Santa Barbara County. And we actually do hands-on workshops where we help you complete these applications. So um, do not panic. I know it's going to be a lot of information, but just to know that uh, this will be shared with you in future years with more detail. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick overview so that way you guys understand financial aid a little bit before you guys go into your senior year. Okay, so, um, you know, I, I know we always hear the words, the term financial aid, right? What does that mean? Right? Financial aid means any type of money, whether it's free or not, to help you pay for college at your for, for any college expenses, really, right? Um, I don't know about you all, but I love free money, right? Who, who likes free money? I know all of you do, right? So my key uh, obstacle or actually my, my key goal today is to expose you to the four sources, the four places that give you free money in the form of grants and or scholarships, right? So um, financial aid divides into two types of categories, right? Gift aid, which is my favorite, and I hope it's your favorite too, right? Because it's free money, right? This is the type of money you do not have to pay back once, once you guys graduate from college and get your, your bachelor's, your master's, your hopefully your PhD, right? Um, and uh, the gift data comes in the form of grants and scholarships. And uh, most of these are, are based on merit and actually need, okay? So uh, in the next couple of slides, I'm gonna show you how to apply and, and what you need, okay? Uh, the, the other category is called self-help aid. Well, this is the, the type of money that it's not necessarily free, right? Uh, in this cat, in this category, we we include a uh, work study and loans, right? We all hear loans and they're kind of scary, right? But um, you know, work study is a program that helps you get a job when you when, when you're going to school and they have help you subsidize your wage. So it's a really really great program to to um, have. And again, loans are not always all that bad, right? Um, you know, you always want to make sure you always exhaust federal loans first because those 
um, sometimes are subsidized. That means that you don't pay interest when you're in school, right? So um, again, um, you you guys will hear more about this in detail by the time you get your senior year and hopefully even before that, okay? Awesome. So how do I apply for financial aid, okay? So there are two main applications that you need to complete, um, but let me be clear, you only complete one, okay? Um, we have the FAFSA, okay, which is an acronym that stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid, okay? Um, who's eligible for the FAFSA? So if you are a U.S. citizen or permanent resident or hold some type of special visa, you are eligible for federal aid, okay? Federal aid can be used anywhere in the nation for up to six years while you work for your first bachelor's degree, okay? So you don't have to stay here in California if you want to go off to Hawaii, New York, Texas, anywhere you want in the United States, as long as a, a Title IV approved school, you can use uh, federal aid um, anywhere in the nation for up to six years. And um, this application will be opening up October 1st of your senior year, okay? So, um, you know, make sure you you keep that date in your calendar. Uh, for students who are undocumented and um, meet the AB 540 criteria, you are also eligible for California State Aid, okay? And the application you fill out is called the DREAM Act application, the one we see on the right, okay? <clears throat> Both applications pretty much require the same information, okay? They require two years prior taxes. So, um, you know, uh, so this year, uh, students who are gonna be applying for the FAFSA will be using their parents' 2020 income taxes, right? They hopefully they should have completed, you know, this, this year, okay? Um, for your, uh, you know, senior year, you, you can always ask your financial aid uh, representative or counselors and they'll tell you which tax years you should be using for your for your um, financial aid application, okay? But uh, you can always ask any anybody from the Scholarship Foundation as well where they're to help, okay? So again, if you are a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, you will be completing the FAFSA application. If you are an AB 540 student, and I'm going to go ahead and share the, the, the AB 540 criteria, okay? So if you're an undocumented student, give me one second, let me, okay, there it is. Um, and you meet these three criteria, you are considered an AB 540 and are eligible for the California DREAM Act application, which makes you eligible for California State Aid, okay? So if you have attended a California high school for at least three years, graduate from a California high school and attend a post-secondary uh, school in California, um, you know, you can um, apply for the DREAM Act application because you are AB 540 eligible, okay? Again, California aid can only be used here in California for up to four years, okay? So uh, it's always great to plan ahead and always have a student educational plan. So that way, if you intend to go over that, you have a plan as far as financial aid goes, okay? So how is financial aid calculated? Um, you know, I don't know if you remember, but I, I mentioned some of this aid is, it's based on, <clears throat> on most of this aid is considered uh, need-based aid, okay? Especially the FAFSA, the federal aid, okay? There, um, you know, California uh, has Cal grants that are both need and merit based. And I'll show you what I mean with that in a second, okay? So as far as the FAFSA go, they use these four factors that I'm gonna share with you to, to calculate this, this code called the EFC, okay? It's, it stands for Expected Family Contribution. And I know it's kind of a long name, so they abbreviated EFC. So um, uh, these are the four factors, right? Household income. So how much parent? So how much money do mom and dad make, right? If it's a, a single parent household, you would include the parent's income who you live with or who supports you more than fifty percent of the time. Household size. Um, you know, a lot of students get confused with what is what does this mean, right? Is this how many people live in my house? Not necessarily. Household size means whoever your parents directly support. So I know that you know with with California having rents super high. You know, there uh, we have homes that are multifamily homes, right? And you live, maybe you share the home with other people. So it's not who lives who lives in your house, but who your parents supports, right? So you and your immediate family, right? Siblings, um, assets and investments. Again, uh, you know, real estate, uh, large business account, a large bank account can count as an asset and investment. So you make sure you uh, have that in hand. And then number of people in college, right? So if you have a sibling in college, that can affect you positively in a good way. Uh, and potentially receive a little bit more in grants, okay? Um, now, California um, has different standards, right? They actually have established uh, income ceilings. So, uh, you know, um, and they also look at your grades, right? So it's important to keep your grades up because each year your schools will send um, your GPA verification to CSAC, which is the California Student Aid Commission, and uh, they check those grades, uh, you know, so that way you can be eligible for certain grants, okay? So I'm gonna go sh share with you in a second what I mean by that. Um, so what aid are, are can students receive, right? 
So by completing the FAFSA, you are eligible for federal aid, state aid, and also uh, institutional aid, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and explain each one in, in a bit, right? So as you guys remember, federal aid, remember, can be used anywhere in the nation, right? So the federal uh, Pell Grant this year is roughly above $6,000, right? I think it's a good deal, right? It takes about anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes to complete the FAFSA, and that FAFSA can potentially get you, you know, over $6,000, right? It's a great, great deal, right? Um, and then you always want to make sure that you select that you are interested in work study because, uh, I, again, in the FAFSA, FAFSA application, you're not accepting anything yet. You're just being considered. So it's so important that you, you are considered for federal work study and then federal loans, right? So if you, by doing the FAFSA, you're being eligible for federal aid, which can be used anywhere in the nation for up to six years, okay? Now we have um, California grants, right, um, which is state aid. So students who complete the FAFSA are being considered for these two types of aid with that one single application, right? Students who do the DREAM Act application are only considered for state aid, okay? So it's really important that you, you that you know which application you have to do, and, and, and please don't start without asking if you're confused, right? We don't want students completing an application and then having you know to tell them, hey, you did the wrong one, right? So it's always important that you wanna ask first and confirm the, the application that you need to complete, right? Um, so state aid, it's, it's also a really great aid. You know, they have the CAL grants, they have CAL grant A, B, and C, right? Uh, CAL grant A, you know, uh, being really great for students who wanna go to UCs and CSUs, right? And they also include the middle-class scholarships for families in the middle class, right? Who earn just a, a little bit above, uh, you know, the, the, the the, the, the lower income families and may not be eligible for CAL grants, right? They can receive a scholarship of up to 40% in tuition reduction, which is great. And they also help uh, foster youth with the Schaefer grant, with the Schaefer grant, which is always, you know, a great, great, um, you know, um, aid for students um, in, in the foster youth programs. And they also help with dream loans, which can be used, uh, you know, at the four-year systems. And then lastly, we have institutional aid. Um, you know, and this is this greatly varies by campus, by type of school, right? Um, you know, we have the UC Blue and Gold Opportunity Plan that can pretty much pay your entire tuition if your family earns less than eighty thousand dollars a year, right? Um, you know, and and you know, it, it all depends on what type of school you go. Especially private schools can can definitely provide a lot of uh, uh, institutional grants uh, based on need, based on merit, based on playing sports. So it's always important to check those types of aid. All right. So lastly, uh, but definitely not least, uh, the outside agency aid uh, is where the scholarship foundation falls under, okay? Again, I think I covered in this past slide, these are the three uh, types of aid or sources, right? There's the federal aid, which is offers the Pell Grant work study and federal loans. We have California state aid, which can only be used here in California for a total of up to four years, right? And then we have institutional aid, right? And then the last source is outside agency aid, which pretty much has entitled, you know, or encompasses all different types of scholarships, right? Scholarships from foundations like ours, McDonald's, right? Dell, Coca-Cola, the Gates Millennium. There's a ton of thousands and thousands of scholarships that I, you know, urge all of you guys to look into, right? Not that many will come knocking at your door like we do, the Scholarship Foundation does, right? But there are a lot of great scholarships out there. You know, the Scholarship Foundation is a really great option for, for students who meet our criteria. Um, for those of you who haven't heard of the Scholarship Foundation, we've been around since 1962. That makes us 58 years old, right? And in the 58 years we've been around, we've awarded over $130 million to over 53,000 students, right? This past year alone, we awarded shy over $6 million to over 1,800 students here in Santa Barbara County, which is where all of you guys are at right now, right? So I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, share with you what it takes to be eligible or be considered for the Scholarship Foundation to make you eligible. So the, the, you know, our biggest requirement is that you must have attended at least uh, four years uh, in grades, between grades seven and 12 in a Santa Barbara County school and graduate from one. So if you are, you know, already a junior and you've been, you know, and will be graduated from Santa Barbara uh, County School, that means you're eligible for the Scholarship Foundation. We also ask that you are planning to be a full-time college student, all right? What does this mean? Um, for most schools that we have here, it's 12 units or more that's considered full time. If by any means uh, your program uh, allows you to be full time with the, with the less units, just make sure that there's a letter uh, proving that and we can definitely work with that as well. And uh, lastly, we award 
all students who are U.S. citizens, permanent residents, and also AB 540 students, as I mentioned in the previous uh, couple slides ago, that you know, if you meet the AB 540 uh, criteria, you will be doing the DREAM Act, and you are also eligible for the Scholarship Foundation. Um, so, by meeting these, uh, you know, we invite you to apply for, to our programs. Um, sorry, give me one second. Um, so. We have, the Scholarship Foundation has these three programs, right? We have the first two being the Art Scholarship and Honor programs. Uh, the, these are our special programs that are only eligible for students in the Santa Barbara area, okay? So I know, uh, you know, a lot of you will meet these criteria, okay? So um, th these two scholarships, uh, they're very competitive, okay? This one's not a competition, and the Honors is, is for students with, with high competitive GPAs. And both of these share the deadline of November 15th, okay? So um, you know, we have the requirements listed here, and uh, there will be a scholarship foundation representative going to uh, pretty much all high schools in Santa Barbara County, uh, sharing with you in more detail all the, the, the information and what you need to apply for the scholarship foundation. And then we have uh, our largest program, which is the general scholarship program. If you don't want to apply to any of these, you're always invited to apply for the uh, general scholarship program. This is our largest program. Uh, program where we have over, um, you know, 500 different funds, right? Um, I know a lot of students get discouraged when it comes to applying for scholarships. And let me go ahead and, and kind of um, talk about two big myths when it comes to applying for scholarships. The big, the biggest one that I hear all the time when I'm at sites is my parents make too much money. I will not qualify for any financial aid. Although that may be the case for federal or state aid because income does play a huge, you know, uh, it is a huge factor in calculating, you know, uh, your eligibility for grants and, and scholarships. But uh, the Scholarship Foundation um, has about 5% of its funds are not need-based, right? So a, a lot of uh, students uh, who receive, uh, you know, maybe the honors program or other scholarship uh, funds, um, income is not a, a factor. But um, obviously, we want to make sure that you don't get discouraged by, you know, by that happening. And then the second one I hear all the time is I'm not smart enough, right? I don't have a 4.0, right? Um, we have, uh, we've have awarded students who have, you know, a 2.0 GPA, 2.1 GPA scholarship. You know, I'm not saying, I don't want you guys going home and saying, hey, Jose told me that I can find my classes and I can still go to school, right? No, by any means. Uh, the, the better your, your GPA, the more competitive you become, but do not, do not you know, disqualify yourself if your GPA is not a 4.5 or a 4.0, right? There are still scholarships you can potentially still receive, okay? So I want to make sure that you all know that our scholarship application opens up October 15th of your senior year, okay? You have to be a senior. You can use our scholarship anywhere in the nation for up to five years while you work for your first bachelor's degree. Um, and you can use it all over the nation, similar to the FAFSA uh, or the federal aid. Um, it's really important that every every year you reapply. If you're applying to the FAFSA, you got to reapply every year. If you're doing the DREAM Act, you must reapply every year. And our scholarship application as well, you must reapply every year, okay? As I mentioned earlier, um, the Scholarship Foundation, uh, sorry, I know I'm going a little fast, uh, is here to help you, okay? I uh, just want to recap on important dates. Um, October 1st is when of your senior year. This is when, you're, when the FAFSA first opens. Uh, for seniors, uh, October 15th is when our scholarship application opens. November 15th is our special programs that we have, which are the, the, honor, the art and honor applications. That's a deadline. And our general scholarship application deadline is January 15th. And remember, March 2nd is a really, really, really important date because that's when both FAFSA and DREAM Act applications are due, okay? So it's really important that you guys keep these dates uh, in your calendar when you become a senior, okay? Um, you guys are invited to follow the Scholarship Foundation um, in our social media platforms. We're on Facebook, uh, you know, Instagram, and uh, you guys can always reach us at info at sbscholarship.org, okay? If you guys have any questions, I'll be around. Thank you for your time, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, stop sharing my screen and invite. Uh, oh, there it is. Thank you for your time. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the, the mic for the next presenter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jose. Um, and now Elizabeth will be taking over to share about SBC Student Community College. So you can go ahead and take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Stein with Santa Barbara City College. I'm a student success coordinator and I help students with the enrollment process. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about 
Um, quite a few things, but again, like they said earlier, this um, presentation is going to be recorded and will be available. And um, if you have any questions for me while I am presenting, you can put them in the chat option on Zoom, and I will get to them as soon as I'm done with the presentation, um, as long as time allows. So education is the key to unlock the golden door of freedom. And really what this is about is unlocking those opportunities. Education, going to college, really, no matter where you go, really supports having different opportunities and options for your future. And what we're going to talk about today is what is SBCC, why students come here, why you might want to come here, how do you make that happen, and when should you do those things? So what is SBCC? So we're one of the 116 California community colleges. We offer associate's degrees, certificates, and also transfer programs. Um, we also have a large non-credit campus, which is our School of Extended Learning. So we really have a little bit of everything for everyone. Why should um, you come here? Why do students come to CC? Well, we have the promise. So our local students, if you're a high school graduate from between Gaviota and Carpinteria, you are eligible for the SBCC promise. That means that all of your costs are going to be covered, your tuition, your fees, books for your classes, which can be more expensive than actually your tuition, and any supplies that are required on the instructor syllabus. So, and this is good for two years, as long as you're in good standing. And I'm gonna talk a little bit um, more in depth about the promise on the next slide. We have over 80 academic majors. Um, this is just a very small list. These are actually our most popular majors, um, business, communication, engineering, psychology, and biology. But really we have um, a multitude of programs. So we have students that come to us because they want to be cosmetologists. We have students that are planning on going to medical school. Uh, we have students that want to go into teaching, uh, preschool kids, um, or K through 12. The really, um, the doors are wide open for the, the multitude of options that, that students have at CC. Um, one of the things that Santa Barbara City College is really well known for, we've actually won awards for it, is our student support programs. So things like EOPS, which um, once you are either in high school or um, are a senior in high school, you'll hear people starting to talk about a summer bridge program for our local high school students that's called Running Start, great program. EOPS, is, you do need to be eligible for it. It's for um, educationally disadvantaged students. And that can mean a lot of different things for different people. Um, and so that is something that you would need to be eligible for. However, the majority by far of our student service programs are, there are no eligibility requirements. They're here um, and available for students to be able to take advantage of. So those are programs like DSPS. If you have an IEP or a 504, um, that will automatically make you eligible for DSPS. If you come to City College and you're like, you know, I was never tested. Um, I think I have a learning disability. Um, they will actually test you and get the services and any accommodations that you need to be successful. They also um, work with students that maybe it's a temporary thing in regards to maybe you're right-handed and you broke your right arm and you for a semester need support in one of your classes. You need special equipment or special um, desk or seating. They can provide all of those things for you. STEM, this is our program for science, technology, engineering, and math majors. Uh, they offer a multitude of resources, including free tutoring, um, help with uh, your academic plan, like what do I need to take and when to get where I want. They do field trips to different four-year universities, as well as internships um, in those fields. Our study abroad program, uh, if that this is something that if you want to travel and also learn at the same time, we constantly have our study abroad program, planning trips, taking trips. Um, you can find more information specifically about the trips that are planned. Usually you can get that information for about the two years from now. So they really plan out and it can be anything from going for a winter break to a summer session to a full semester. And they definitely try to 
do different countries, different cities, different majors, different types of classes. So there definitely usually is something for everybody there. The honors program. So if you're interested in taking classes that are a little bit more rigorous, um, this is something that you do need to apply for. Um, there are certain requirements, but it's very, very simple to apply for. The other great thing is they are very active on campus. So it's not only um, more rigorous classes, it involves you in a community on our campus. And they also have access to a multitude of different scholarships that other students may not be eligible for. Our student equity program is a program that runs our, um, and you'll see right under there, food pantry. We have a, a food pantry on campus. Students can go get any, I mean, they can get everything. It just kind of depends on what's going on from fresh burri breakfast burritos to eggs to cereal. I've seen students walking around campus with watermelons under each arm. So nobody is going to go hungry on our campus. And that is all no cost to students. Um, student equity also puts on different events from book clubs to movie readings to or movie watchings, excuse me, uh, to um, discussion groups, club events, a very, very um, wide range of different events to get involved in and participate in. And then our University Transfer Center, for those of you that are thinking that you want to transfer from Santa Barbara City College to a university or a college, you would work with our Transfer Center to figure out what school you want to go to, potentially um, talk to one of the college reps from those schools because they do visit the University Transfer Center on a regular basis, find out which schools have which majors, et cetera. This is also where you're going to find our transfer program, which is our TAG program, our transfer admission guarantee. You can find the full list of our schools on the website. You can literally go to sbcc.edu, put TAG into the search option and be able to get to the TAG webpage, which gives you the updated information. What this means is that we have transfer agreements with certain schools, UCSB being our most popular. And what it means is that you basically do your freshman, sophomore equivalent with us you have a, you have to maintain a certain GPA for that college. For UCSB, I believe right now it's a 3.4 and you're guaranteed admission. I don't think that many local students realize how hard and impacted UCSB is. Um, it is a very difficult school to get into. And so some students that really want to go, like that's their top school, they will come to us, do their freshman, sophomore, enter into a TAG agreement and then do, transfer directly into UCSB. We do have other schools, quite a few other UCs and other private and out of state schools that we do tags with. And again, you can find that full list on our webpage. Academic counseling. I think this is something that students don't take advantage of. And for our promise students, and I'll talk a little more about that in a second, is extremely important that you take advantage of this. Basically, academic counselors are going to help you create what we call um, a student education plan. Basically, it's a roadmap. It's telling you what classes you need to take um, each semester in order to get where you want to go. And so it definitely um, gives you a plan. You know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Sometimes those, change, those plans change, right? Maybe a class, you had to drop it because you're working. Maybe you didn't do as well in a class. Maybe you want to completely change your major. This is something that your academic counselor is going to help and support you with. So it's very important that you meet regularly with them. And then also we have well over 50 CTE programs. And what that is, is our career technical education. And career technical education programs are like any other college program. Um, they're kind of singled out because they're a little bit different. You're not sitting necessarily in a classroom learning via lecture or by writing papers or doing reports or, or presentations. You're actually getting a lot of hands-on experience in those, these programs so that when you graduate, you're ready um, and equipped with the knowledge and the skills to be able to go start working. So we have well over 50. Um, some of them do require uh, an application to the college, just like any other student, but then also have what we call a supplemental application. And those are the programs listed. So if you're thinking about going into radiography, x-ray technician, sonography, any of our nursing programs, cosmetology, 
our marine diving, our culinary program, or automotive technology, or actually all automotive does not have a supplemental application. I apologize for that. So it's just the top four. Um, there is a little bit um, extra information that you need to get. Some of them require prerequisites. Some of them, it's just a matter of they maybe have a specialized orientation or they're specialized um, supplies, like for culinary. The real, real reason they have the supplemental application process is because you have to show up on day one with certain supplies, like a certain uniform, your knife set, et cetera. Um, and again, if you're a promise student and you have a culinary class that requires a knife set, that is something that you will be able to get paid for by the promise through our bookstore. So let's talk a little bit about the promise. So the promise is for our local students completing their secondary education or resides within our district. So um, that means Gaviota to Carpinteria. We also have quite a few students that, that go to our public schools. Uh, we have students that are between Gaviota and Carpinteria that are going to private school. We have homeschooled students. Uh, we have students that are, I've dealt with a few students this semester that are graduating from an online high school. Um, charter schools, we, we work with a few charter schools as well. And so all of those students, as long as you reside in our district, which is Gaviota to Carpinteria, you will receive that two years free of charge. Um, this is a project that is funded through our foundation and it does cover all enrollment. So that's your tuition, that $46 a unit, your required fees, any required books and supplies so that you don't have to worry about how you're gonna pay for college. You just need to worry about going to college. Um, there are some other requirements. Um, you do need to apply for financial aid every year. And this is gonna look a little bit different for each student. So the requirement is that students either apply um, and submit the California College Promise Grant, grant application. And that used to be called the Board of Governors Fee Waiver or the BOG. You have to do the FAFSA or you would do the California Dream Act. So it's not all three of those. It's depending on what you're eligible for, um, it, you would fill out one of those, okay? You are required to do that every year. You also need to commit to a full-time student schedule. What that means is that for the majority of students, a full-time student schedule is gonna be 12 units. Majority of SBCC classes are three units. So you can think it's about four classes each term. So that's for the fall and the spring. Summer does not is covered. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and there isn't a unit requirement. So just for fall and spring terms, you would need a minimum of 12 units. The only, um, difference with this is if you are a student who has a 504 and IEP and you're um, receiving services through our DSPS office, they may say, you know what, a full time for you this semester is going to be nine units. And if that is what they're saying you need as an accommodation, the promise will still provide all of those benefits of enrollment the supplies, the books, et cetera. You need to participate in a minimum of one academic counseling session each semester. So that means that you need to meet with your academic counselor one-on-one -on -one at least once a semester. Um, this, again, I can't reiterate how important this is that students do this um, and not wait too long because if you wait until you're registering for the next term, they, everybody else is doing the same thing that you're doing. So you wanna make sure that you're meeting with them, you're updating your plan, you're updating them about you know, changes that may be going on in your life. Maybe you changed your major, maybe you're having a tough time in a class, et cetera. Um, so that is really important and a requirement of the promise. The last requirement is remain in good academic standing. And basically what this means is that you need to pass your classes. So with a 2.0 or higher, which is a C, um, so the classes that you take, you need to make sure that you're passing them and that you um, are remaining in that good academic standing. If for any reason you don't meet that good academic standing, I also like to let students know that there is an appeal process. Um, and so I always tell students never just walk away. You know, we all have 
family emergencies, illnesses, maybe you, you know, um, got in a car accident, maybe something, you know, you had to start working more hours or you lost a job, life happens, right? And so unless we know that you need to petition to continue to receive services, you will not receive them, right? But I always tell students it's better to ask and have somebody say no than it is to not ask at all, okay? You can also find more information about the promise, contacts, et cetera, um, via the SBCC Promise website. You can literally just put that into Google. It'll bring it up. Um, I'm gonna be giving you and my coworkers contact information at the very end of the presentation. You can always reach out to us as well. So how do you get to SBCC? Well, there are steps that every student needs to take. The first one you're gonna do is apply. And that application, um, and you find, we'll find all of these steps with links um, on the website, uh, apply. Then you're gonna set up your pipeline account. Pipeline is our online student portal, which also you will be given um, a pipeline account. You'll be given a pipeline email as well as a student ID number, or we call it a K number via your pipeline. Placement normally is taken care of, is not an extra step that students need to do um, because for high school students, sometimes it is, but for high school students by far, if they're answering the questions on the application correctly um, and not passing questions or, or just estimating, um, then basically your placement will be taken care of via the, the application to the college. Orientation, this is a 45 to 60 minute presentation. Students can do it whenever they want after they apply. Um, and basically it's a lot of videos and you answer questions. There's a quiz at the end. Gives you a lot of information about the college, about how to do things, how to process, how the process um, for different departments works, et cetera. It just kind of gives you a foundation for getting ready for starting college. Then class planning. Class planning is gonna be done with an academic counselor. This is where you're gonna pick out your classes that you are going to take that very first term that you come to Santa Barbara City College. And then last but not least, you're gonna register for your classes. And for those of you that are promised students, when you go to register, your balance should be zero, okay? A couple of other things that I did wanna talk about with the promise that I, I skipped over is that for students that are um, graduating in June, let's just say, so let's just hypothetically say you guys are seniors. I know you guys aren't, but you're senior or most of you aren't. Um, that you're graduating this June, your promise program would start fall of 2021. It does not start during su our summer session two. If you were to go summer session two, that would be something that you would need to pay for out of pocket or apply for financial aid for. So you would start that fall. You can take what they call a gap semester and wait and start in the spring if you choose to, but that's the longest that students can take off and still be eligible. You do, you only have that one term that you can take off before you come in, okay? Um, the other thing is, is that you need to opt in to the promise and you will do that via the application and you will also do it via the promise website. It is not automatic. I repeat, it's not automatic. You do need to click the opt in button on the application and then quickly go over to the Promise website and opt in there. So when you should apply to Santa Barbara City College. So we have a very robust local high school, um, myself, as well as my um, coworker, Mary Lou Huerta, who is bilingual, um, will um, be coming out to the high schools monthly. So even if you're in the ninth grade, let's just say, and you have questions about you know what majors we have, or you know that you're interested in nursing and you want to find out more information about what programs we provide, you can always come and see us at a monthly visit. Um, it's really important, especially once you're like second part of your junior year, beginning of your senior year, it's really important to come check in with us. We do different events. We provide student support and we, a big piece of what we do for seniors is our fall enrollment. So we literally just finished with this last week. And what this means is that we do specialized workshops from January through May 
the second semester of your senior year. So in January and February, and actually it went into March, we did application workshops. So we walked you through the application process. Then we did orientation. Then we moved on to specialized class planning sessions for our local high school students. And then last week, we had two days of back-to-back -back registration um, workshops. So we will walk you through all of those steps. It will begin late Jan, like the last week in January, first week in February. Um, we will do a big presentation to each high school, and then we'll um, start with the workshops from there. So we just want you to know you're not alone in this. Again, Mary Lou and I work directly with all of the local high school students. We're here to support you. You're not bugging us. I always laugh and tease that it's job security for Mary Lou and I, but, it, but we really are here to help you and support you. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us to ask questions either now or once you get closer to applying. Um, we are here to support you. We would much rather have you reach out to us so we can help you answer, get answers to questions, or if something isn't working correctly, um, then we can support you in that. And here is my, our contact information. So um, email right now, um, Mary Lou and I, because we are still working virtually, um, is the best way to reach us. We do have what we call a welcome center, which is a general email. And then we also have a phone number. It probably would be quicker for you to email the info at SBCC. Um, to get any information or any questions that you need help with or to email Mary Lou and I. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you, Jose, as well. As you guys have learned tonight, Santa Barbara has so many resources for its students, so make sure that you get Elizabeth and Jose's contact information. They both shared it. Um, I see that it's also Jose shared his email in the chat. Elizabeth, if you want to just drop yours in the chat in case someone forgot to write it down when you were sharing your screen. Um, here's CalSOAP's contact information. Once again, we offer um, tutoring services, college uh, preparation services, and financial aid services. So take down our contact information if you would like to reach out to us for more information. Um, and then I'll pass it on to our facilitator from StriveScan, Catherine. Awesome, thank you, Madeline. And thank you to both of our representatives. Um, feel free to submit any questions you have in the Q&A before we close. Um, we are certainly happy and available to answer your questions. But again, thank you um, to our representatives for um, sharing all the great wealth of knowledge and information and thank you to each of you for joining us as we close there'll be a very quick four question survey that will appear on your browser if you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us your feedback is greatly appreciated um, there is an upcoming session coming up so feel free to sign up for that session um, at the same place where you registered for this one and lastly, all sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash calsoap. Again, thank you all and have a great night.